So here's some news links, and I found quite a few interesting things here. Um, the one thing I want to mention is uh, the real ID is coming. You're going to have to get this mark on your driver's license, or you won't be able to fly on an airplane without a passport, even internal flights. And it's gotten much easier to get. I, I added the checklist to my news links. Now all you need is two reasonable documents. You need like a passport or something, and then some other document that shows your address is current. And there's like 20 possible documents. And I saw stuff like a voter registration confirmation and a vehicle ownership document, uh, registration of a car and stuff. So stuff you can reasonably have now. You have to go to DMV, but at least they'll now take documents you can reasonably have. Uh, when I tried to do it about a year ago, they only wanted documents that haven't existed in 20 years, like your hard copy of your hardline phone service bill and stupid things like that. Now they've added more modern options. So we all have to do that pretty soon, or you'll have to carry a passport for flying airplanes within the country, which is not terrible, but kind of silly. And also, you can register to vote online. It's very easy. I put this link in the news, too. It's very easy. I did it this way. So much easier than filling out paper and mailing it back to them. And of course, uh, you might want to vote. Although, of course, California's voice in the presidential election means nothing, thanks to the Electoral College. But anyway, um, you might want to vote for the initial ballot measures and the downline races and stuff. Um, that we'll get to later. Uh, so here's some more news articles. So Microsoft has updated their core cryptography library to include post-quantum cryptography, which I've talked about before. Um, if quantum computers get a million times better than they are now, then they'll actually be able to crack RSA and elliptic curve cryptography, and you'll need this alternative cryptographic system that used to be called Crystal's Kyber, and apparently now it has a new name. I guess that was like a temporary name. Now it's called MLKEM, uh, which is uh, machine learning with errors. Anyway, it's a new modern uh, system that cannot be cracked by quantum computers, so we should all be starting to move to that. And I'll include it in my cryptograph cryptography course next time I teach it. Uh, I wonder if that's next semester. I think it might be. I put the classes for next semester at the bottom. Yeah, I'll be teaching cryptography next semester. So I'll have it in there. All right, anyway. Um, there's an interesting website full of research threats made against security researchers. They just gathered these things together, and it looks pretty awesome. Here's the first one. In 2023, they arrested the students, stripped them naked uh, because they reported a vulnerability. They found software vulnerabilities in the student timetabling app. Uh, this happens a lot. When students tell like uh, schools and stuff that they found a vulnerability, they just get accused of hacking and get thrown out of the school or imprisoned or abused in some way. And this website is, is collecting those stories. So they're kind of interesting. That's why, you know, the professionals say if you find a security vulnerability, if they don't have a bug bounty program, don't tell them anything, just let them get hacked. Uh, if you tell them, you're liable to just get hurt. Uh, anyway. Uh, this is an interesting article I just learned about on Pulse Security Weekly. Um, unprotected container registries. My understanding of this, I haven't understood it completely, but I think the point is, yeah, registries are repositories where you can store and share container images. Now, containers are like virtual machines. You download a container and you're running a whole operating system and some software with all the dependencies and everything. And the point is, a lot of them will just let you put up arbitrary containers without proving that you're really a member. Um, and the public ones, like Docker Hub and Google Container Registry, have security features. Because anybody can put one up, but they make some attempt to stop you from putting up malicious ones. But people pick private registries and then unsecure them, so you can send up malicious registries. And um, this is part of the supply chain weakness that people are getting very aware of. Um, when you develop software, you're downloading libraries from these repositories, and who know, really knows if it's the right library or if it's an old version or if it's been put up by someone malicious. And it's the same thing here, unprotected registries. He found 10,000 of them still open and unprotected. And this means uh, if you could put up one that fooled the developer at that company, they would start building software based on your malicious starting point, and you managed to sneak malware into it. So it seems like a bad idea. Um, this is kind of interesting. If you've done C programming, when you open a C program, the first line is this. Uh, you have exit something, and you have this char star constant arg v in every C program. And that means you can move in the command line arguments when it was called. But arg v0 is the name of the program itself. And this turns out to be pretty weird. The operating system already knows the name of the program you're executing, but you pass in an argument, which is supposed to be the name of the program, but it could be something else. 
and that confuses things. It confuses things like Windows Defender. A lot of uh, people assume that what's in argv0 is in fact correct, and it's, you can control it and modify it. So you can actually run programs that Windows Defender would like to stop, but change the argv0 to a space and now it won't recognize them. So this is just another strange relic of the past. There is another way to make a program a little screwy so it will confuse your defenses. Um, and I mentioned before we should all be freezing our credit, so there's a couple of websites here I got from Paul's security, or uh, Steve Gibson's security podcast, and I'll probably make a homework project out of this for extra credit where you freeze your credit. There are a couple of pages talking about how to do it. We should all be doing this because all of our social security numbers, addresses, phone numbers for the last 20 years was all dumped out about two weeks ago with national public data. So anybody can start applying for credit in your name unless you freeze your credit, and then when they try to get your credit history to approve you for a loan, they won't be able to. And it's apparently a very easy process just involving filling out some forms. I'm gonna do, I've got to do it, and I'll try and turn it into a project so you can get extra credit for doing it, because we should all be doing it, and you should be telling your parents and your family and everybody you know to do it too. Um, let me check for comments in the Twitch, if I can figure out which tab it's on. Here we go. All right, there's no comments, fair enough. All right, so Mexico seems to be going through a crisis like Israel. You know, before the attack from Hamas, um, there were huge riots in the street against Netanyahu because what Netanyahu was doing is changing the structure of the Supreme Court so they will no longer be able to check any of his power. So he'll basically rule like a dictator, which is also what's happening here with the Supreme Court declaring that the president is immune for any crimes he commits while in office. That effectively makes our president a dictator too. Um, so the same kind of thing is happening in both places, but they had a similar one. The one in Mexico would give citizens the power to elect all the judges, and therefore the ruling party can just get like 51% and then make all parts of the government just follow their, they say it'll, it'll collapse the checks and balances such as they are in Mexico. So anyway, um, many countries are going through similar upheavals right now to ours. Oracle says they're going to make a data center and run it with nuclear reactors. Apparently these are what submarines use, a small nuclear reactor in basically like a container, a shipping container. Uh, a lot of people talk about these small nuclear reactors being the wave of the future. Uh, it's not really clear that they can really do it yet. I think the availability of these things and all the legal consequences are not completely clear yet. So it's not clear how long this will take or if they'll really be able to do it, but a lot of people are talking about this a way to get power without uh, putting any more carbon in the air. India is going to trade 5,000 cyber commandos to go around and improve their cybersecurity everywhere. Lord knows they need it. I found huge, ridiculous vulnerabilities in Indian apps and such. And uh, so they're going to have a registry with those involved in cyber and online financial frauds. And uh, anyway, they're going to try to have some government-organized group of Cyber experts helping people, which is not a bad idea, I guess. We'll see how it actually works out in practice, but I think many people need this. Um, most small businesses just do not know what they should do to become cyber secure. I'm going to be giving a talk to a psychologist association soon about this, you know, how to secure a small medical practice. And in fact, CISA and NIST have published documents that tell you how to secure your small business without going insane, and so that's what I'm going to base my talk on. Um, it's just what you think it is. It's like uh, update your software, change the default passwords, implement two-factor authentication. That's the first steps, you know, to take you from being completely vulnerable to a little more secure. And you have to accept, you know, going through stages of cyber maturity. Um, you do not get to be a professional company with top-notch security all at once. You move up a little bit and a little bit. You improve your practices. So Elon Musk is very much like Trump and very similar, and he has been posting many f false posts about non-citizen voting. This is Trump's big issue, claiming that he, he, if he loses the election, it doesn't count because non-citizens are voting. This is completely false. There are many studies showing that there's not, the number of non-citizens that vote is a ridiculously small number, like 500 in the whole nation, not enough to sway anything. And um, But he spread this myth that a uh, huge amount of election fraud is out there, and Elon Musk is vigorously spreading it too. There was also this claim recently that the immigrants are killing people's pets and eating them, which is completely false, and Trump quoted it at the debate, and the, even the ABC moderator fact-checked him and told him to knock it off, but Elon Musk was spreading that one too. So, you know, since he took over Twitter, he's made it uh, like Fox News, like, like Rumble, he's made it just a bastion of Russian uh, 
disinformation and other disinformation, you know, just spewed out. Apparently, he thinks he can uh, make more money by joining the right wing and just putting out a lot of lies to keep people uh, off balance and under his thumb. This is a popular thing oligarchs do. They make the people sort of fed up, make them distrust the government, distrust the news, distrust science and medicine, and you just give up and just put up with whatever the government does, and then you don't mind when the government is just completely corrupt. You expect it and accept it. So I've heard uh, Scott Galloway is always saying we should educate social media. There's evidence that some people regard as pretty strong that, that children are harmed by social media, like Facebook and Twitter and, and so on. And so the Australian government said they're going to do it. They're going to introduce a minimum age for social media access. And the interesting thing that I would like to know, which is not here, is how do you measure the age of people? This is the problem. They've tried to do this elsewhere where everyone would have to like send in a photocopy of their driver's license to some third party to verify their age. And then you've got that database and how are they securing that database? And uh, you're trusting these people. So anyway, we'll see what comes of it. Age gating is something a lot of people would like, but how you actually do it on the internet is very unclear. And Poland had a um, commission investigating the use of Pegasus software. I've talked about this before. Pegasus software is the powerful malware you can buy for like a million bucks, and then you can just take over iPhones and anybody else's phones. They don't even have to click on a message or open a message or anything. You just push out a message to them. It infects their phone. Now you can turn on the camera, read all their emails, turn on the microphone, and totally invade their life. It costs a million bucks, but it's very powerful, and many government agencies use it. And their claim is that the previous government in Poland used it against their political opponents, which they probably did, and they made, made a court to investigate it, but now they have decided that it's unconstitutional for them to investigate whether the government's using a software. So they have stopped the investigation for the moment. So we'll see what happens. But um, it certainly is happening all over the world. And uh, evidently these guys have found some kind of legal dodge to try to prevent being caught doing this. Many other rich people in uh, um, nation states have been caught using this stuff. And that's why when students come to me and say people have hacked me, they're stalking me, they know everything I do, I no longer tell them you're crazy, that couldn't happen. I say, well, that, that totally could happen if you have a real powerful enemy. Now, if you're just an ordinary person and nobody really rich and powerful hates you, then it's not likely to happen. But if you are somehow politically significant or if, if somebody is powerful, they can do that. <laughs> they can totally hack all your stuff and stalk you. Um, so it's not impossible. Anyway, uh, I'm going to stop this recording.